Hello everybody. Today we'll be looking at the first question of this year's IMO, which just concluded not too long ago. Now, for the IMO, um, it's important to understand that if you can fully solve one question, that would allow you to get an honourable mention already. So usually the first question will be the easiest one and this is also going to be true for the IMO this year. It is not very difficult and I would encourage you to give it a try. Pause the video if you haven't already attempted this problem before. Now we've just come out of SMO season so to speak and a problem like this could actually show up in somewhere between the junior and senior second round. It's not very difficult, even by IMO standards and even by SMO standards. So we can use this as an example of some of our very classic tools. Now, to read the question, we are asked to determine all composite integers n greater than 1, such that if we list out all of the devices in ascending order, then a divisor should divide the sum of the next two divisors. And most of the time, it's a good idea to try something like this out for a few minutes, just experiment to figure out what kind of answer to expect and also to get a bit of experience with what the question is trying to say. So since they're telling me about composite integers, I could try something like, okay, composite integer, the first one is 4, the factors are 1, 2 and 4, and obviously, 1 does divide 2 plus 4. So that works. Next composite integer is 6, where the factors are 1, 2, 3, and 6. Now, 1 does divide 2 plus 3, but 2 doesn't divide 3 plus 6. And so therefore, 6 does not work. The next number that is composite is 8, with factors 1, 2, 4, and 8. Now, 1 divides 2 plus 4 and 2 also divides 4 plus 8. So 8 does work. And then the next composite number is 9 with factors 1, 3 and 9. Obviously 1 is always going to be divisible, sorry, 1 is always going to be a factor of anything. So if we only have 1 at the start, we don't have to worry about it. And let's maybe write down 10 as well. So 10 does not work because 2 does not divide 5 plus 10. So up to this point, we see that the question statement is not that complicated. And also, we already get some examples which do work and some examples which do not work. Now, the examples that worked, um, two of them were a bit silly because the only thing had was a 1. Now, if the only thing that you have is 1, then obviously it is going to work. So basically, this would be cases where you have three factors. If you have three factors, it's always going to be one divides the sum of the other two. So those will all satisfy the condition. And three factors is basically going to happen when you have the square of a prime number. So that will work. If we look at the other one that worked, which is 8, you realize that 8 is actually 2 cubed. And if it's 2 cubed, then it is pretty obvious why it's going to work, because 2 is going to divide 2 squared plus 2 cubed. And so it's not so surprising that if we were to try something like a power of p, where p is a prime, your factors are going to just be powers of p. And this will definitely work because 1 divides p plus p squared. p will divide p squared plus p cubed. p squared will divide p cubed plus p to the 4 and so on. And so this also works all the time. Now you want to experiment like this most of the time because it will tell you how complicated or simple your answer is likely to be. So now we have already got all of these prime powers will work. 
And the question is, how about something that is not a prime power? We have seen that 6 and 10 don't work. And the question is, will there be any situation where a prime and another prime can both appear in the list, in other words, there's more than one prime factor, and yet this thing still continues to be fine. So now I'm going to try to experiment with that. And when I experiment with that, I'm going to just put an arbitrary n, and let's say that it starts off with 1, p, and q, where these are distinct primes. Now, there is nothing wrong with the starting. If the smallest prime factor is p, the next smallest prime factor is q, 1 still divides p plus q. And p could certainly divide q plus the next thing. There is nothing inherently wrong with that either. But the thing about factors is that we know they come in pairs, which means that at the other end, we are going to get n over p and n over q as the two largest factors other than n itself. So our question is, I don't see any problem with 1 being a factor. Is there a problem with n over q being a factor of n over p plus n? We need to be careful with this because n over q and n over p are actually positive integers but they look like fractions. And so when we are doing anything here, we don't want to turn them into actual non-integer fractions. So I'm going to multiply by pq first, which gives me np divides nq plus npq. And then after that, I will safely cancel off the n throughout. So p divides q plus pq. And pq is a multiple of p, q is a prime, so this is actually a contradiction, this does not work. Which means that you cannot have the two smallest factors other than one to be two distinct primes. Are we done yet? The answer is not quite. We are not quite done because it is possible that you have more than one prime factor, but maybe the prime factor is not there yet. So for example, how about if I have a number like uh, 40? Now if n equals to 40, the smallest factor is 1, and then 2, and then 4, but then the next one is 5. So 5 is a prime factor that's not within the first 2, but it still shows up later. So just because P and Q doesn't work here, doesn't mean that we are already done and only get prime powers. It does, however, mean that the only possibility is that the first two other factors after 1 must be just P and P squared. because if you have got, let's say, the factor down here has pq, then q should have appeared earlier, right? because pq would be bigger than q. So you cannot introduce a product of primes before getting the prime itself. So if it's not p and q, it must be p and p squared. Now I want to know, is it possible that it goes like this, and then the prime q shows up later in the list of factors? The answer to that question is not quite, because p divides p squared plus the next number. So this thing is a multiple of p. Then the next one would be p squared divides the box plus the circle, 
The box is a multiple of p. Means that this circle is also a multiple of p. And so you're going to end up with everything being multiples of p. Of course, this would be something that you could write by induction, but it is fairly clear. It just means that p squared divides the next two, then after that, those two are both multiples of p, means that now the box divides the circle plus the next thing, they're both multiples of p, so the next thing's a multiple of p and so on. If everything is a multiple of p, it means that there is no room for q. You cannot fit in another prime number because everything is supposed to be a multiple of p. And so this would imply that only prime powers work. So I think this is a pretty nice question. It may be a bit on the easy side for the IMO, but it's also a pretty good um, educational example of how we work with these kinds of questions on factors of number. I may upload some other IMO solutions, but I'm aware that uh, right now, I am not blessed with an abundance of IMO participants watching my videos. So perhaps it might be a bit too soon um, to try to put in something like IMO Q3 and Q6. But if you would like me to try to explain those, do let me know in the comment section below. And if you have any other su suggestions for me, please do let me know. So thanks for watching and see you again very soon.